In this video, I'm going to be covering some basics that actually may be a little too basic for quite a few of you out there. But for anyone getting into web development or anyone that's just curious to set up their own tools, uh, maybe you've not tried it before with your own local servers, I'm going to show you how to do that. And this came about because a lot of people ask me the question, how, what tools I use and how I use them. And I actually have two development environments that I use. The main one is Mac based. And the second one is Linux based and we're going to be covering the Linux one today. And the nice thing about that is all the tools are free and I'm actually going to be running mine in a virtual machine. But of course you could easily do your own install of Linux on a Mac and uh, or you know, on a Windows based machine, any of those. And so what are the tools we're going to be covering? Well, we're going to go through and cover what I consider to be a basic list that you might need. Uh, the first will be, uh, we'll start with an Ubuntu Linux 13.10 install. And I've not done anything to it. It's just a straight up install and then rebooted the machine and installed the OS updates. After that, we'll do the LAMP stack, as it's called, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And on top of that, we'll add PHP MyAdmin to monitor and work with the databases easily. And we'll install Git as our source control. That's the one that I prefer to use. After that, we'll install Ruby and Ruby on Rails. We will then install the Node version manager, which will allow us to easily install multiple versions of Node if we need them. So we'll go ahead and install a version of Node as well. We'll then install the SAS, LESS and Compass tools. Um, so for example, SAS and LESS there, I'm sure you're probably familiar with. There are a couple of the CSS tools out there, the preprocessors that people are using these days. And then finally, we'll install a new one for me, which is Yeoman, which is Yo, Grunt, and Bower. And they are basically, those three tools allow you to quickly set up web apps um, using some generators, and it'll stop out all the code for you and grab all the files that you need. And I've actually uh, recently come across this myself and have been quite impressed, and, and I think it's very useful and certainly something that I'll be using in the future going forward. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we go. We've got a, a straight setup and install of Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is open up a terminal and I'm just gonna move it over here. And I'm also gonna open up a web browser and just to show that there's nothing installed, right now when we try and run a local host, we have nothing here. The first thing we're gonna do is I like to use aptitude instead of apt-get. So I'm just gonna install that. Now let's start installing some of the tools we're going to need. First up, we have the Apache 2 web server. And then we have the Git core, which is the source control. I'm also going to add curl and vim, which are a couple of tools that I th think you'll probably be using at some point. I'm not going to go over what each of these tools do here. I'm going to Either assume that you know what they are on some of them or that you'll go ahead and research because there's a lot more than we can cover in this short video. I just want to get you up and running quickly. Next up, we're going to install the MySQL server, PHP MyAdmin, Ruby, Ruby gems and Rails. Now it's worth noting there are lots of different ways to install all these tools. You can certainly go grab the source and compile them if you wish. And I'm sure lots of people have opinions on the best way to go about doing this. But I want to stress that the technique I'm showing you here is just to get you up and running fast and is really designed for those who perhaps are not that comfortable or familiar with say a Linux environment or knowing how to compile source code. So I just want to get all the tools installed so you can start using them to do the development work, which let's be honest, that's what it's really all about. On some of these, for example, MySQL server and PHP MyAdmin, 
It will ask you to supply passwords. I do recommend, even though it's just a development environment and not designed for production, that you go ahead and use passwords uh, just to keep things organized and protected even on your local network. So I'm just going to go ahead and set a password for the MySQL root user. And it's going to ask me to confirm that password. And then for PHP my admin, I'm going to hit the space key to say that I'm using Apache 2. I'll hit tab to go to OK and hit the space key again. On PHP my admin, I'm going to say yes, please go ahead and install and set up the dbconfig common for me by hitting the space key. It's going to ask me for the database administrative password. And I've also configured the password for PHP my admin. So now that's all that's finished, let me show you back in the web browser what we have. So now when we run localhost, we can see we've got our local web server running. And if I do slash PHP my admin, you'll see that we also have our database server and the web front end for working with that. So the username is going to be root plus the password that you've put in. And there you go. You can see that we also have the, the MySQL server up and running for the database and we can access it via a web page as well. Now we're going to go ahead and start setting up Node and some of the other command line tools. And I'm actually going to paste this one in just so you don't have to see me putting it in. We're basically going to curl a script from GitHub. And once that comes down, we're actually going to run it in the shell. So I'm just going to paste that command in there and run it. And this is going to install the Node version manager. Now there's a funny quirk that I've noticed on Ubuntu here. If I try and run NVM, it's not going to work for us. Even if I was to just run it like this, you see it's not going to find it. And even if I close the terminal and reopen the terminal, I'm going to have the same problem. And the way you fix this is for the terminal, you need to go up and go into profile preferences and go across over to the title and command tab. And you need to check this box here, run command as a login shell and just close that. Now close the terminal, reopen it. Let's just drag the window to the side here. Now when I run it, it's actually going to find the tool. So that's just a little funny Ubuntu quirk that I've come across. So let's use the node version manager and we're going to tell it to install version 0 0.10 of node. You can go to the node.js website if you wish and see what the latest version is. Uh, that's just the version that I'm going to install here. And now I need to tell the node version manager to actually go ahead and use that version. So that's that taken care of. Now that we've got Node installed, we need to go ahead and use the Node Package Manager and install less. And the dash G there says to install global. So it's actually going to put it in, in, in Node where ev every user on the machine can access it. Now that that's done, we're going to install the SAS tool and that's we're going to use sudo gem install SAS. It's going to ask for the password. And we'll do the same thing again. We'll do sudo gem install this time for compass. Now, while that's running there, I'm going to go over to the web browser here and I just want to show you this last set of tools we're going to install. And so if you go to yeoman.io, you can see we're going to install Yo, Grunt and Bower. So you can go to this web page and decide if you think you need these tools or not. But assuming that you do, you can actually in the terminal just use the node node package manager to install them. So you can go npm 
install dash G and just say yo. Once those files have finished downloading and installing, that's it, we are done. You now have a working local web development suite that you can use and I hope it's been useful. Like I say, there are lots of different ways to go about this and I'm hoping that I've given you a simple straightforward way to do it without many hassles. Um, try it out, see what you think. Like I say, all the tools are free and sometimes it pays to just play with these things.